All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ podcast. Thank you for letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to the KISS FAQ podcast, episode um, 20. (laughs) I'm, of course, Julian, and joining me today... Returning for the first time in a long time is uh, Ellen from. Where are you this week? I'm in uh, I'm in Japan. And it is late at night for yes. you, so we'd better get Very moving late, a little yes. bit more quickly. Uh, Ken, thank you for joining us again, and welcome back. We had the surprise this week of doing an episode 19 in the middle of the week, so I'd just like to give a big shout out to uh, Rising Force, who's Chris on the. Um, message board for setting up an interview with Mark Slaughter, which turned out to be an extremely fun thing to do. And uh, a big thanks to Mark for spending time with us. Um, I think we were able to get quite a lot of interesting stories from Mark. So he's out on the road today playing a gig in Nevada So with Slaughter. So um, let's get into it. Today's topic is Kiss Books. I mean, we're going to focus uh, first on the autobiographies, the good, the bad, and the ugly, for everything that's been published so far by Gene, Paul, Ace, and Peter. I don't think Vinny's put out his tell-all book quite yet. Um, and then we'll get into, you know, the rest of the books, the unofficial, the semi-official, and I, I guess Ken, in the case of Ken Sharp's books, the official, um, non-related uh, book. So let's jump in immediately to the autobiographies. I'm going to start with you, Ken, because the official autobiographies, we've only had these published so far by the originals. Uh-huh. So um, let's go into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Which is your favorite? Which is your least favorite? And uh, what do you think over all of these? Um, my favorite, uh, so start there, uh, my favorite was Paul Stanley's, which is the most recent uh, book released of the autobiographies. Um, he was more forthcoming and to a degree surprising some of the things he actually revealed um, about his childhood and, and so on. Um, and probably the most accurate, from what I can tell, uh, of all four biographies. Um, so th- that was a very good book. Um, it's in my, you know, it's going to be in my top five books of Kiss books. But um, as for the other biographies, Peter Chris, um, I don't know if I believe some of the stories or not. And then he's very, very hard on, or very uh, disgruntled. It's like a disgruntled employee who got fired from a from a company. Um, Which he and, was. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, three true. times. Three times. Right, right. He keeps coming back. I wouldn't keep going back to the same company if I keep getting fired, right? Um, uh, so, yeah, he was very, uh, he attacked it a lot, but he was always, he did nothing wrong, according to him in his book. Uh, really, he didn't do anything wrong. It was always the other people. Um, around him, whether it's the band or, or, or someone else. Um, so that was kind of hard to read. I, I mean, it was good to a degree, um, but that, that was kind of hard. It was just too negative, I guess. Um, Ace, the next, next one, Ace Fraley, um, his obviously was just missing a lot of content. Work, content. <laughs> um, he forgot it all. And if you have to go back to friends and to remember stories they may not remember those stories either correctly you know you never know so uh that was missing a lot of content i would have expected a lot more from him maybe more about the music uh uh, you know his his guitar you know why he chose different tones or whatever in in on different albums and things like that. Um, but he, he missed a lot. Um, well, he missed his whole solo career in his book, didn't he really? Yeah, he did. He <laughs> yeah. did. So kind of shocking. Yeah, yeah. Shocking. Like shocked me. So, uh, that one, it was kind of disappointing too. Um, and then Gene Simmons, um, uh, and he, you know what? It was pretty good, but I think he released his too early. He should have waited longer. Maybe like Paul Stanley, um, but he wasn't totally forthcoming on everything. He was kind of vanilla 
about uh, subjects regarding kids or he wouldn't he really didn't attack people um, he was trying to be the middle road took the middle road or high road whatever you want to call it um, in his book I, I would have liked a more revealing book from Gene the real story not the BS not the marketing stuff just the real story I mean I'm hoping he does do another biography at some point and really lays it out there you know with no BS yeah I, I think at some point Gene will will no doubt rewrite something else and uh, what's he just had me ink out <laughs> So, so favorite is uh, Paul. Least favorite. Which one would you pick for? <laughs> oh, that's hard. But uh, I'm gonna say um, Ace. It was my least favorite. Right, Ellen. Yeah. How I, about you? I will start. I will start with my least favorite, which was Ace, simply because it was so poorly, poorly written, poorly edited. They're just difficult to read just for that. I thought. Um, P- Peter. Peter's book was was very interesting it was very very interesting to read he he went into a lot of details and he he was just very very negative about it um, he always saying that he put everything behind but just would keep coming back to it um, he referred to a lot of other books I think um, um, what's his name Kurt Kurt Gooch said that Peter got inspired a lot from uh, from uh, Kiss Alive Kiss Alive Forever and and I and I could see that as well. Surprisingly, perhaps you I, I like Gene's book because it was uh, sort of a, almost almost a fairy tale. You know, he, he everything was fine and he, he never got into an argument and everything was was written in the stars and everything was well well and beautiful and he took Bon Jovi on. In, in Europe in 1980, and it was it was kind of cute. I, I like I like Jean's uh, Jean's book. Paul Paul is a Paul's read, reading Paul's book was 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 kind of shocking to me. I I think his intent was to pretend to be honest. I don't think he ever was or ever will be with with the fans. And he wrote. He, he said so many bad things about his, his parents, too. I mean, his, his mother passed away, and he tells everyone that, that his dad had an affair. And why would you write that to, to kids' fans? Maybe say that to your family, or even don't keep it to yourself. But I wish Paul had written more about kids, and I didn't find his book inspiring at all. I think he's, he's as bitter as, as, Paul, as Peter. And actually, when... He was attacking Peter. Was kind of the comic relief of the book because he just hate everything about Peter. Just the way he breathed, the way he talks, the way. He, just not saying that for an example. I remember saying when he he said that um, Peter was not an intellectual because his makeup is the cat and um, then the star is the star <laughs> intellectual makeup. I mean, he said I want to be a star, so I put a star on my face. And just that. So he. His his resentment towards Peter was kind of funny in a way. It was really well written. Um, I'll give him that. Um, Peter's book was well written too, but it was just it was almost sad to sad to read. So I say my favorite was Jeans, and my least favorite was Ace. And that's a, that's an interesting thing that you say about Jeans. It's uh. If you're a student of history, you've probably heard of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's fireside chats, you know, back in the 40s and, and 30s where they'd get on the radio. And that's for me, is Gene's tone. It's also folksy tales with Uncle Gene. You know, it, it's just the, the tone of grandchildren, I'm going to tell you about my life. You yes. know, there were the girls and, and all of that sort of thing. So it's homey, it's folksy, it's so utterly safe in so many ways. Um, but I also found it the most revealing of, well, in terms of like information of the four. Um, so jeans is my favorite. Absolutely. I, I, I agree with the point that it was probably released too early, but how many of the other guys have been able to do four different covers, um, for their books 
reprints with bonus sections. So Gene nailed it in terms of the School of Gene Simmons marketing. Um, and I think the content holds up well, but you need to also have Sex Money Kiss to get a little bit more of the story. So between those two, you know, Gene hands down is the winner. Paul, I mean, obviously he's been my favorite member of the band, so I was really looking forward to it. Um, but I was shocked, utterly shocked by the tone and the the almost passive aggressive attacks at everything and everyone in his life. Yes. Um, and I know yes. he ha I know he had issues and mental challenges and. No one can fully understand those sorts of things from the perspective of the person uh, suffering those. But the attacks on his parents were just, I, what is this doing in a kiss book? You are the guy who pontificated from stage that we're at a rock and roll party tonight, and we're here to celebrate and not to worry about the bullshit of the news. So it was kind of an antithesis of everything that Paul stood for, his book. So... There was some really cool information, um, but it skirts over, and, and I have the same fault with Aces. It completely omits large sections of their histories, of their creativity, um, and, and just focuses on little areas where they really seem to want to pro uh, have propaganda. Aces was, you know, garbage. I mean, no memories. Simple as that. I'm glad he wrote one, or, you know, had it written for him, but he really didn't remember enough to be worthy of publishing a book and killing all those trees. Um, well, maybe his book should have been called No Mem Memories instead of No Regrets. Yeah, no, no regrets, no <laughs> recollections, no memories, no nothing, no content. So it, I'm, gl I'm glad he lived long enough to write a book, but I'm really disappointed that it had nothing on Frehley's Comet. You really would have thought it would have a lot more detail on... You know, 1982-84, um, you know, the formation of the comet. And, and just, if he didn't want to focus on that, at least an overview of what he really did. And there's not enough. So, Peters is aggressive. And I, when I interviewed him way before the book and getting all those answers of, it'll be in the book, it'll be in the book. Well, none of it was in the bloody book. You know, and as a KISS fan, I want to know about his past you know, his musical history, not just his chip on his shoulder. I, I know he's he's had a tough life, but it didn't do anything in terms of pr uh, making me very sympathetic towards him. Um, it was just uh, aggressive. It's everyone else's fault. Um, you know, screw you all. I, I wonder how much the his co-writer had, a, had, a, had an input into that, because uh, he always said he wanted to be you very honest and he's been promoting his book since 1987 I'm writing a book I'm writing a book but just it went a bit too far and there was no one tell no one said to him well maybe you shouldn't say this or you shouldn't say that he just went on and it, it, do, it doesn't come out well at all That's, no uh, no and and it doesn't come across so like the Peter that I met you know obviously it's a, when I met him in 2003 at a, a meet and greet you know, that's a different situation that you're not really going to sit down and, and get deep with him. But in terms of what he was like as a person right then and there at that moment, um, you know, some of the things he was joking about, um, there's no humor in his book. There's, and I, I will say Paul and Ace and Peter are all guilty of there not being much joy in the book. These are guys who rode to the top. You know, they were one of the most well-known bands of the 70s. They're an American icon, and there's very little joy of that accomplishment. Gene may be bragging at points, I've sold more records than the Beatles, and I've got a bobblehead, <laughs> and I've got the most licenses in Kenya. Um, but where is the joy in all of these guys' memories for what they actually accomplished? Where is the middle finger to that... Um, critic in Seattle or whatever in 1974, um, you know, where is... That's a very good point. Where's the celebration? And all of the books lack that overall. It comes in maybe in a little a little bit of points, but um, I've monologued for too long, so... Um, mm -hmm. Ken, did you go to Paul Stanley's signing in San Francisco when he was here? You know, I contemplated doing it, and I, I didn't pull the trigger. Oh, you should have. <laughs> oh, it, it was fun. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I should have, but I, I didn't do it. And one of the things someone posted on the board in the last week, and I keep, I think I removed it the first couple of times, um, Paul's audiobook narration of his book. So you get to hear his tone and his inflection when he's reading through the brutal attack on Peter Chris. It's up on YouTube. Um, I've, I've, I've heard it. Yeah, yeah I don't. I, I listen to it and I'm like, oh my god, that just totally reinforces what I really thought from the reading. To get his tone as well when he's saying it. I mean, it's almost like he's holding a voodoo doll of Peter and stabbing it with pins <laughs> while um, reminiscing. And maybe it is. It you know, we're not there. We're, we're looking in from the outside here. There must be a lot of pain. Peter must feel a lot of pain from his situation, regardless of whether we consider it right or wrong. Ace, I don't know, is he still capable of feeling pain or is he still numb? Um, but, you know, he, he probably does have regrets. And Paul, no doubt, has has challenges. So let's move into the happier, happier zone, I guess, of the unofficial books, which... Uh... There's a lot of them. Oh, God. Yeah, so a lot of unofficial books, and um, I guess in in the case of Ken Sharp's books, licensed or official Kiss product have also come out, apart from the bio autobiographies, which give us a lot more information, I think. So let's run down some of the favorites that you've got, um, and least favorites as well, because that's not be unfair. Um, Alan, let's start with you, some favorites that you've got. Okay, I, um, I don't have... Well, it's not exactly a book, it's a magazine, and unfortunately I have the cover torn. But if you know what this is, if you've seen it before... Oh, music Life. Music Life. This is, yeah. the, this is Music Life. It was called a Kiss Encyclopedia. As if, for the two or three of you who don't know what this is, this is a book, this is a magazine released in 1977, 172 pages. In Japan. In Japan. Which one was that? Japanese. Was that 77 or 78? I always get them mixed up. The, the red cover one is 77, right. so it was released in May after the, the first tour. And I got this in the, in the late, seven, late, late 80s, originally the, the reissue from 1987, 1988. This book, I spent countless hours looking at the photos, trying to read the Japanese, eventually reading the Japanese, but just, just for the photos. And then... It, um, if only the uh, the session of, of the band uh, walking around in Kyoto in kimono and uh, with the temples behind them, and of course the live in at the Budokan and and all their uh, their interviews, this this book is this magazine is, is amazing. It's it's uh, it's definitely one of my top in top five of my favorite uh, printed matters related to Kiss. There was two of those, right? Yes, the yeah, this, I... I have. The seventy-eight, this this one. Yeah, I think I have both of them. I think I have both. I'm not such so much a, a fan of of the second one because the first one was just very hard to top. So I'll I'll stick with the first one. <laughs> so I'm I'm just quickly scanning through the Kiss FAQ. Oh, and lo and behold. Music Life Kiss Special. Um if you go to kissfaq.com whack FAQ scan, there is a collection of scans of stuff that I did one of these 2010 years ago so we've got the whole music life special scanned up there uh, for people to go and check out you're not going to be able to print out the pages in good enough quality but th those I remember being advertised in the 80s you know 50 or 60 bucks to get those I didn't get them at the time you know I was thinking oh kiss encyclopedia really cool when I finally did get them I was absolutely uh, aghast at the amount of Japanese text, which, why wouldn't it be in Japanese, obviously, but uh, the pictures are fantastic, the layout's fantastic, the the quality of, of those, so if you want to see them, go to the KISS FAQ, and I will post a link to those, um, as, as you'll get lost just checking out all the stuff in there. Ken, let's move into one of your favorites. One of my favorites... Uh, that's great. Well, it's probably a lot of everyone's favorites, but this is one of my favorites, uh, Kiss Alive Forever, which is, I think, a must-read for anybody um, who's a Kiss fan. Exactly. And uh, it has all their dates up to, I believe, the reunion, right? The reunion tour? Or... No, th this goes through, I think it ends with... Uh... Farewell, farewell tour. Yeah, it, 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 it ends with Jamaica, with Tommy's very first show. 
Ah, okay. So, but how, how it, ironic. It has all the stats for, you know, attendance, whether it was video, uh, recorded uh, on video or audio and it has the set lists if they know they knew the set list most of them they they had the set list listed they have a little bit a, a little description before each tour about what was going on uh, at the time when these tours are about to start and uh it's it's really really cool it has some really behind the scenes stories from i think a lot of it from road crew and and other people um that have there's interesting stories that happened at different uh, venues and so on. So that that is one of my favorites. That's a great read. I've read it probably a few times over um, easily. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I think that one's going to be on most people's close to their number one, isn't it? Because it's just outstanding. It's, it, yeah. Close. It's an excellent book. Lots of uh, tes- testimonies from the, the crew and very rare photos that have never been published before. And, of course, all the details about the touring um, it, it's a really, really, really fantastic package. Most of them have a picture of the stage. Most of them uh, have a picture, at least one picture of the stage for each tour. Yeah, lots of anecdotes, and and, and it's really well written too. And I mean, the the first um, first couple of pages of the, the years where they they introduce, they 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 actually write about about Kiss. It's it, it's it's a really really good book. Yeah, and I think that that's the key point about it. It's well written. Um, it doesn't get lost in the weeds either. It stays very focused, um, whereas some other books go off on tangents where you end up not really knowing what you were originally reading about. Um, it stays highly focused for each one. Um, mine, it, Mine's falling apart. Mine's got so many – well, obviously, I've put corrections in um, – <laughs> I've noted a lot of them with additional information for those uh, things that we've learned in the year since and stuff that maybe wasn't in it. But it is just an inc- – and I think it's it's the research that they did that went into it. I mean if you were around on the internet when they were finishing up the project and they, were, they had like I think five or six shows that they just could not find information for and they were putting out um, – you know, uh, news items on the Kiss Asylum website saying, we need your help. What do you know about these shows? Just to consider going back to 1973, verifying. The Kiss FAQ's um, concert listing started with the version from the 1994 Kiss FAQ. So it had all those errors and all these other things. And they started fresh, as Kurt was saying on his Three Sides interview. They started from point blank. Like, they didn't know anything and independently put it all together. So... Just the legwork is absolutely staggering. You know, great choice. Alan, what would be one of yours? Well, you were talking about books going off tangents, but I think this one is fantastic too. Kiss and Sell by Chris Lent, who's a, their uh, business managers. This, it, it's again, very well written and, and a great read and behind the scenes, the, all the details we get about the finances and all that. It's, it was a really eye-opener. Um, completely shattered the image of Kiss as superheroes or, or business geniuses. It was, of course, completely wrong. They had no idea what they were doing. Uh, management, great companies ripped them off. And that's how they became business savvy, right? I think uh, the success of the reunion tour was based on all their failures in, in the 80s and the 70s. And that was also very interesting to read and, and learned a lot of things we as fans had no idea or we didn't know uh, how the, the LA Forum three day was a disaster and things like that. It, 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 and um, also some interesting um, insight on, on the personalities. He knew he remembered a lot of details. Like I think he got a bit uh, criticized a bit for for being too detailed on the, the, the brand of cigars that so and so was smoking <laughs> on that day. But overall, it's a, it's a very interesting, very interesting read about Kiss and the, the music business. I, I really like that book. One of my favorite stories in that is the one where they're in Italy with the militants. <laughs> yeah, they, they're being chased by the anarchists. Yeah, yeah they're they're running on the stage and. I guess they run down some off stage. They're kissing kiss and Chris Lent is running down some big uh, tunnel uh, back there, and he he describes Gene Simmons. They run so fast that he, he ran, <laughs> ran right out of his boots, 
and he's he's just going. They never seen him run so fast. They think Paul Stanley was the fastest <laughs> running down, and they they got through the door and slammed the door shut. But that that was one of the funniest stories. I was like, I couldn't believe there, it. There were lots of good anecdotes, like the the problem they had in in Brazil and uh, with the promoter and. Uh, mm-hmm. The, the tour in Mexico that never happened because everything was okay, okay. It, it was really, uh, really fun to, to read and, yeah. and very interesting, yeah. Hey, Lonnie, thanks for joining us. So um, we've, we've become three again, as we should be on our panel, or the panel that I'm looking at, or four. Um, we're talking about Kiss and Sell, and one thing I, I love about that book is it's just got a take on it that no one else really has on the band's history. It's very well written. It was perfectly timed. Um, and I, I think the detail that Chris goes into on the book, apart from it being incredibly well written, in terms of that, I think it's possibly the best well written book yet, um, just in terms of its presentation, its language, and everything. So, love the minutiae. You know, as you know, Alan and Ken were saying, you know, the, the stories. Um, I love the part where they get fired as well. So, you know, fantastic that's, book. That, that too, that too, that's true. Milani, thoughts on Kiss and Sell? It's fantastic. I remember seeing it, like you said, the timing of it was just impeccable that it came out right as the reunion tour was happening. It was the first time I saw it in a bookstore and it had a, you know, it has the picture of the newly reunited Kiss on the cover. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know about it. I was like, oh, what is this? And I was like, oh, I gotta have this. I went and bought it. And just, the, the, like you were saying, the detail in there, you're not going to get that kind of insight or that kind of behind-the-scenes type of information of what was really going on anywhere. Not from Gene, not from Paul, not anywhere you're going to find out the stuff that was really going on. Like my pers- Personally, my favorite part of that book is like the Dynasty tour of how... The Dynasty Tour was just tanking financially and how they were just taking such a hit and how they had to have them all in the meeting. Like, okay, Ace, you can only have X amount of champagne, X amount of bottles of champagne per week because you're just killing us. And you have to pay for your own cigarettes. (laughs) (laughs) And just how much money was just being blown on that tour and because the band still thought they were the biggest band around and but they were they were just they were just getting killed night after night and how the the tour had how they had to expand the tour to try to cover expenses just to keep the tour going because they were just losing so much money but not only that but just how he came on board in the early part of the book and you know getting to know the band and him being on tour it's just a perspective that no one else has been able to provide and that book was written Nine, that book came out 19 years ago, and no one since then has provided that kind of insight that he was able to. It's just, I've read it twice. It's just fantastic. Excellent. Okay, so let's move on to other favorites. What would be one another one of your favorites, Lonnie? Since um, One of my favorites is um, Into the Void with Ace Fraley by Wendy Moore. And <laughs> I, I couldn't put that thing down. I read it in a weekend. It's just crazy. And I don't know how much of it's act, how much of it's fact, how much of it's fiction, but I was just hooked on reading that thing. <laughs> it's 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 incredible of the behind the, of what was going on with and it, and I guess it, you know I guess certain parts of it have to be true because the band was really starting to fall apart again around the site around the time of Psycho Circus, um, and Ace looked a lot different when he came on stage at Dodger Stadium than what he did on the reunion tour. You could tell something something else was going on with him. Um, that That's definitely one of my favorites, as crazy as it is. Um, what else? Like those kissings, it's, it's, it's keeping on the theme with Ace, those, um, those two kiss and tell books about Ace Frehley are, are really good, too. They have some really great <laughs> inside story and minutia about Ace Frehley, and I think um, as much as I really, and I, I guess I'll get into this later, I guess I really don't care much for Ace Frehley's autobiography. Um, some of the unofficial books about Ace Frehley are, are my personal favorites, actually, because of the crazy stories and the shenanigans revolving Ace. You don't get too many crazy stories involving 
Gene and Paul, but Ace really tends to tends to provide some of the more humorous situ humorous stories. So you said the Gordon word basically by saying kiss and tell. <laughs> but uh, as any anyone knows what a polarizing figure Gordon is, um, he does make one very good argument that if it wasn't true, don't you think he would have been sued by now? Um, and he hasn't been sued as far as I'm aware. So um, I, I think enough of the stories in there have been alluded to elsewhere um, that it yes. may have, it may have made painful reading um, originally, but I'll, I'll leave it there. You know, he hasn't been sued and he got away with it and your heroes aren't always what they appear to be. So let's move but on. If I can just go back to this for one second. You know, there's actually a picture of Ace in uh, in the Nazi gear in, in this book, 1978, oh, yeah. right? So this was already kind of documented back then. Of course, it was only made in Japan, produced in Japan, and no, no people know. But I think he, the the the, fir the original first time we heard about it, I think was was in Gordon's book, and um, and then of course Lydia posted pictures later on. But it was already in '78. If you if you lived in Japan and cared enough, you 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 knew that Ace was uh, was a interesting character. Yeah, and and so many fans had those music lives elsewhere, so I mean th there's really no excuse and fanzines in the 80s used to photocopy pictures from other magazines to put in there as their content. So, um, you know, it, it's a costume. It's not a not anything really other, you know, who who cares? You know, Paul wore one as well. So, um, you know, Ken, let's move into another favorite book. Uh or another book that is worth of it, worth well, mentioning. Well, no, yeah. Well, this is a. Uh, oh God. Looks looks familiar to Julian. Oh, yeah. He did not. He did not pay me to show this. By the way, <laughs> but uh, the series, actually, the series. There's three books of these. The series of the Kiss album Focus uh, was written by Julian Gill. Oh, and <laughs> and uh, we have the big, I, thick I, one. Too, yeah, this is the too. this is the first thing that really. Uh, went through, you know, each album and discussed what was going on at the time and little anecdotes, other songs, demos that may have been recorded during the uh, recording of each of these albums. And um, uh, I, I, you know, I read through these books a couple of times each. Um, and I sometimes I pull them out just when I'm listening to a certain Kiss album to just get a background out while I'm listening to it. I'll, I'll, I'll be reading it. Uh, what was going on is kind of, a full experience, I guess you can call it. Um, but th these are very good. I, I would recommend any Kiss fan, you know, to pick up the the series of these these books. Uh, I, they're very good. A lot of stories in there. Uh, I don't know how you got all the the information, Julian, but uh, it's it's pretty amazing, really. You know, they're they're more of an aggregation, and you know, I, I feel I should have sold red pens with these. You know, especially the ones when I was <laughs> self distributing them. Oh. If ever there was a project in need of an editor, it was that. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to use fan book as an excuse for my own grammatical failings, but I can't proof my own stuff to save my life, and that should be apparent to anyone who's read those. You know, it, it's they're not original interviews in most cases, which is, is a shame, but it was impossible to interview everyone involved. So they were a best effort. Obviously, they started off on the Kiss Asylum website as a feature. I just thought it'd be cool to print them up. Uh, I guess a, a little bit of ego there, but, you know, four volumes, Amazon.com. <laughs> Thank you so much for setting me up. Huh? <laughs> All right, Alan, let's move on to one with you. Um, I can't show it, but um, I remember getting Kistory and after waiting 11, 12, 13 months after ordering it, when it came out, it, it was it was really, really fantastic. It, the price was shocking at first, but once you had it, it, you, it was worth every penny. Um, there are pictures that had never been seen before. My favorite series, probably the, the non-makeup photos from the 1976 tour in Europe. It was finally, I think, the first time they were really telling their own story um, after Exposed. Um, lots of great pictures, uh, lots of anecdotes. It, it was a massive book, and um, it's definitely in, in my top five, just for the, the just, they, they were saying it's going to be this big, it's going to be this thick, it's going to be that, that expensive. 
but it will be worth the wait. And and indeed, it, it was uh, it was it was really really a work of art. I really uh, enjoyed uh, enjoyed that book. Yeah, completely audacious project for the band to have coordinated, and I couldn't afford it. I was on the dole in Scotland, no job, no money. And I saw this monstrosity, and I'm like, well, what the hell would I want with a nine-pound book? You know, um, fantastic book, though. The majority of the content, apart from the cartoon segment, which doesn't do a thing for me, um, loved the general overview of the story, of the band's story from their perspective. The the photos are absolutely incredible throughout. A lot of them were new to me. I mean, I know there's people who, oh, I've seen it, I've seen it, you know, but whatever. Um very, very cool when I finally did cut, get a copy when I came back to the U.S. Did anyone buy History 2? I have it. I'm a sucker. <laughs> is it really as bad as I recall it being? It's, Pixelated it's, pictures and all that? I flipped through it once, maybe twice. It's, it's really bad. And it's really a shame that as great as the first one is, that this is what they put out as the follow-up. And like, it's like history two toys, games, and girls, or something like that, and it's it's just you know it's products and it's it's just magazine covers and it's just it's like it's like a hodgepodge. It's like it's like it's like the movie Twins, like where Arnold Schwarzenegger is like all the great genes and Danny DeVito is like the crap left over. That's what history two is. It's like the crap left over from history one. Like they had all this stuff. Like what are we gonna do with this? Oh. We'll make a history two and just throw all this garbage in there, and that'll be history two. That's really what it is. I always felt they should have kept going with the history series, and Kurt and Jeff's book should have been history three on the road. No doubt. Um, imagine Kiss Alive Forever weighing nine pounds wow. in that beautiful print with the official Kiss logo on it, but you know, then all the money would have gone to them and not to Kurt and Jeff. So, um, you know, Gene said, 10 volumes of history. Well, there's your third Sorry. one, Gene. You know, make it make a deal. Okay, I'm going to pick one now. And I am going to... Behind the Mask. Which, I'm going to say it's by Ken Sharp, because predominantly it is. But what I really love about this is the 1979 David Leaf um, biography on the band. Just because it was written in an era, and with access to the band before they were completely polluted and changed people. So you get much more of their histories, and some of the stories of Peter, you know, we did this song and it was stolen by... It, it, I'm still trying to figure out what that is. Um, um, the stories are just fantastic. And then obviously it set the standard somewhat on the little vignette interviewee clips on songs and albums um, that I really like. I'm really... I really dig that format. Um, I think it works as a quick and easy and not really in-depth way, you know, to cover an awful lot of material without getting bogged down. So once you get into the band, talking about the albums, the songs, I, I, I really feel you're getting close to them. And Ken's interview style and writing style, I happen to like a lot. So obviously I'm, I'm a fan of Ken Sharp and his books. Um, I, I think it, it's fantastic. Any other thoughts on that, guys? No, Ken's phenomenal. I, I, I've enjoyed that, you know, and obviously nothing to lose. Also, I mean, Ken just does a phenomenal job with. Yeah, but, and that that one's up on my my stack right next to me as well. Um, right. I mean, that's I mean, that's kind of a similar format. Those um, two, those two books are are definitely two of my favorites. Um, the way they're put together, because they both have the same kind of format. The way the story is told in both in each of them, and you want to, you want to talk about minutia and detail. Nothing to lose has so much from that era, from those three years, from the formation of the band. But I'm kind of getting off the topic here. But um, no, oh, um, it's, it, the one book. What's the first book you should hold, hold, hold up, Julian? Behind the mask. Behind the mask. Behind the mask. I'm sorry, I didn't think of it off the top of my head. But no, it, that that's great too. I mean, absolutely. But yeah, and, and I and I to, I totally hope that Ken is engaged to do a um another nothing to lose type book for the seventy six seventy six to eighty. You know, just yeah, keep it keep yeah, it tight. Exactly. And then and then you know do and, and keep going do like an eighty one through eighty four or something. That that'd be the book right there. Those years when things were really going haywire. You know, I would I would love to hear just details like in. 
from different eras like we got out of nothing to lose. That'd be fantastic. Man. Yeah, Ken Sharp. I may be the only one, but I, I, I thought there were too many details in nothing to lose. <laughs> I, I got lost into in, 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 I, I respect the, the research and, and the writing and everything, but there were there were at times where there was just too 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 many details and going too much into into um, into the peripherals and not so much the not so much the the, the con. It was uh, it was too much for me. I have to say I I I don't think I finished it. It was just another 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 story was just too much yeah and, and that's a common theme in some of the criticisms I, I think primarily of nothing to lose is you know I read some of the reviews on Amazon and it's like why do I care what the color of the walls of the Coventry were you know or, or what drink was on the end of the bar but um, you know <laughs> d different people have different things that they like to read so you know all criticism's fair and ken's a big boy and can and take any of the criticism on it so uh ken any thoughts on either of the sharp books i guess as, uh, before we move into your next choice yeah nothing to lose in the behind the mask um i did have the i have the advanced reading copy of behind the mask that i i bought on ebay i guess it was sent out to uh you know an editor or a uh, 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 editor or whatever, reviewer, book reviewer, and I had bought that before it was even out on the store shelves. Um, uh, but those stories by individuals who were around there at the time um, during, uh, you know, those those times, uh, the first one uh, behind the mask, which is a little bit more, you know, uh, time span there, it's a good book, but nothing to lose is really good. I couldn't put that one. I couldn't put it down. It was very, very good. Uh, it's on my top five for sure. Yep, it's up there. You know, you know speaking of that book, do you guys have you guys noticed that like when Peter Chris does like these signings, you know, for like the horror movies conventions, whatever that he does, he says like on there that he'll he won't sign drum heads or drum parts, and he won't sign the Nothing to Lose book. Have you guys seen that? Mm. He won't sign Nothing to Lose. Really. And I was thinking about that, and I'm like, I guess because Gene and Paul had a, obviously had a large hand in it, but I don't remember him just getting just nailed so bad on it that he that he would refuse to sign that book. That something must have really struck him that he's like, you know what, I that he won't even touch it or even sign it. That's, and I don't remember anything that was. Do you guys remember anything that was so horribly said about Peter in there that he's that turned off by it? No, no, nothing particularly that maybe wasn't in, you know, used in the same interviews that Ken, I, I think, used for uh, Behind the Mask. Um, but who knows what goes on in the background, because I, I think one of the complaints of both of these is that there aren't enough Ace and Peter, of course, which seems to always be a challenge when it comes to official KISS product and former members, because obviously... It's official KISS product and former members, so who knows what goes on in the background. Um, I know I've asked, I've reached out to both of them for some of my projects asking for um, input and have never heard back. So I, I think it, when we also talk about uh, the KISS documentary, that there were efforts to bring them in, but they were reticent to be involved for one reason or another. And right. we, again, we don't know the details. We could. We can, we can guess, uh, but I, I don't think that serves any purpose. So, you know, it's Kissel, uh, it's Kissel, official KISS product, you know, versus Ace and Peter. So, Ken, next book. Another one is <clears throat> one of my favorites also is, uh, should go with, along with, I think, Kissology, um, is the, you know, Lydia Chris book, Sealed with the Kiss. Definitely. Great, great book. Uh, it's pretty heavy and not as heavy as history but it's it's a big book has a lot of i mean she was a photographer uh you know i started out i think it's just taking some pictures and then became a real photographer at one point uh but she has a lot of pictures that we never seen before um behind the scenes pictures uh very interesting and then the stories uh from her uh point of view of what was going on with kiss at the time um it's very very good book, very well written um, and enjoyable. It's 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 just ton of, a ton of pictures, and they're re and they're really good. 
and it's an incredible effort for one person. I know she had some yeah. help from other folk um, in the layouts and everything, but what an incredible effort uh, for Lydia to have accomplished. I, I think that's what I'm most impressed by. And when we go back to some of our criticism of Peter's book of how he seemed to go through Kiss Alive forever and, you know, build his book from that, he should have gone into Lydia's book and built it from that because her memories about the Barracudas and his pre-Kiss uh, stuff in there. I love the second edition of um, Lydia's book, which has all the tour dates that she kept track of, all of his gigs um, appear in the back of the book and a couple of other photographic changes throughout, but to see, you know, his Sounds of Soul concerts and Barracudas and really get a good idea of um, where all those transitions happen. You know, great book. A uh, little bit light on the text, but she tells the story through pictures. Yeah, it's worth it for the that book is worth it for the pictures alone. Yeah, it's just like, blowing, blows you away with some of the stuff that's in there that you had never seen before when that came out. All right. She was kind of the, it, she's like the social version of Kiss and Sale. As much as Chris Land had the business version, she's the social version of, like, you know, they're partying, they're at the hotel, and they're, right. they're, they're mm -hmm. going on vacation and all that. And supported by pictures that only she could take. So it's, it, it, um, we, we should really be really grateful that she, she took the, the time and effort and money to, to give that to, uh, to, to the fans because that's a really a labor of love. Yeah, and you're not going to get any closer access to a band member than from their spouse. So, yeah. you know, it, it's great that she was also willing to share a lot of that stuff because it, it could so easily have, uh, you know, not been shared. All right, Lonnie, let's go to you for a book. What about, uh, what about this one? You guys have this one? Ladies of the Night by Kane oh, Simmons? Who writes nope. a book about prostitutes by Kane Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's horrible. You guys, just, are you guys a big sucker too? Did you guys buy that too? No, I did not. No, I didn't, no, I didn't just, buy it. No. Just me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I dug it out this morning, and like I could tell, I never even flipped through it because like the pages, you could feel them like like they were being separated for the first time or something. I never even looked at the thing before. <laughs> but who writes a book? Who who comes out with the idea that hey, you know what? I'm going to write a book about prostitutes. I'm going to put it out. Only Gene Simmons would do that. <laughs> Well, wasn't he also going to rewrite um, that Chinese military? Uh, yeah, uh, war, uh, the art, art of war. war yeah. You know, so yeah, who writes a book about prostitutes? Someone who will take a public <laughs> domain book and slap his name on it, exactly. and Kiss fans buy it because they're not aware of it being a public domain book <laughs> or Me Ink. Did anyone buy Me Ink? No, I haven't. Mm -mm. No, I got <laughs> <laughs> I got a signed copy of it. It's I, I got the I, original I, version. Oh, I got that too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the same book with another it's, cover? Yeah, I, I think it's the same book with a different cover. On I'm sure it is. It's is it? I, okay. No, I, 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 I don't, I don't think it is. But it's, it's the same. It's the same. Uh, I'm so wonderful story, though. I'm sure that's. That's in there. More stories like, from Uncle Gene. Exactly. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, um, I don't know. You guys mentioned a lot of the good ones already with nothing to lose, and you guys were talking Kiss and Sell when I jumped on. Um, I mentioned the, the Wendy Moore book. You guys didn't have much love for that either. Um, I don't know. Those were, those were the ones on my list, actually, that Ken. I really enjoyed. But you get... Who has the Kiss Monster book? Do you guys have the Kiss Monster book? Of course not. No. I do not. I, just, I drew the line with that. I did not cough up four grand for the, for the Kiss Monster book. They had it on the cruise. And then, like, they had, like, a lady flipping through it for you. That you couldn't flip through it yourself. They had a lady that would, like, <laughs> flip the pages over for you. And, I mean, they're pretty incredible. They're pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of photographs. But it, it's mostly a lot of pictures in there are of the current lineup, which I don't have a problem with the current lineup, but I don't know. I, I, I was expecting and hoping that there'd be more 70s stuff in there, and I don't think there's any non-makeup stuff in there at all. It's all pictures from the 70s or pictures of the current lineup. That was my problem with it. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to buy any book that's that big or that bloody expensive. Ignore that history. 
Yeah, and if I'm going to buy it, I would rather they had done it in, the, again, the same size as Kistory, the same weight, nine-pound book, That's yeah. you know, and with that sort of binding. And if they'd kept it to the most glorious shots in the archive or from, like, 73 to 76 or 77, just yeah. that would have been stunning, you know, uh, their heyday, you know, so forget Alive, or maybe include Alive 2, but forget everything after Alive 2. Don't bother with Dynasty, Unmasked, you know, no offense to Eric Carr, or, you know, those eras. Um, just keep it to Super Kiss, and you see some shots pop up in black and white. I mean, the close of Gene, full Demon Mode, 1974 at Long Beach. Yeah. Um, those on that size and quality paper would have been perfectly fine. That would have been a $250 book I would have been interested in. But a $4,000 book, that's just a, that's just a gimmick. You know, or even like a series of them, they, you know, if they, if they wanted to do that. Like a 74 through 77, like you were saying, Julian. And then do like a, a 79 through 80 five or something like that yeah. i mean you you'd get suckers like like me or some or andrew to go buy them you remember that i have that too that's a nice yeah that's that nice that one's an, that one is an excellent nice. one the pictures in there are excellent and yeah some stuff they should have never, they some should stuff i've never seen before that that came one, out. One, this one, too. one yeah that's good as well with wearing abbott one with uh bob gruen one with barry levine one with it would have been fantastic and that was the one you were holding up, Ken, right? Barry's book? Yeah, Barry's book, really yeah. Good too. A lot of great pictures in there. So th there's obviously a market for KISS photo books. Um, obviously, rights issues would be a challenge, but um, let's go back to the one Alan was holding up, the first, uh, the Warring Ab Abbott one, because yeah. that's that's Gene Simmons and Paul, you know, kind of narrating a lot of the pictures and setting the scenes for that yeah. stuff. You know, that that's, that's a fantastic book. I, I, one, one of the few, I guess... I do have. I do have, I think I've got uh, Levine's as well. But uh, they're taking pictures with the uh, around Central Park or wherever in New York with the older people and stuff. Yeah, that would be a nice. Yeah, that, to have that is a, a great. A great a meter by one meter like, by fifty. <laughs> and like them getting the facials is in there too, and that yeah. in there as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just really unique and, and different stuff. There's a lot of pictures in there that that I know I had never seen before when when that came out. Yeah, um, and, and photographically, again, there is so much out there. There's so much that's been seen, but there's so many outtakes from these photo sessions. And, I mean, we're seeing some of them uh, Ross Raleigh's posting at the moment. Um, you might have seen uh, the one outside the hotel. that They're not too sure of where it was. You know, glorious pictures like that. Photo books will always be of interest to KISS fans. Um, I think that'll probably be a, a better way to, to go about it in smaller volumes. Forget Monster. That's a joke. I mean, I, I don't think it was meant seriously anyway, so. No, it's a publicity thing more than more than anything they could get on TV and say, oh, you know, for what it was, as big as it was. And no doubt we're skipping over a lot of books here, but we're, we're kind of cherry-picking the favorites. So, Alan or Ken, any other, you know, favorites that you want to mention before we give Lonnie his I, space for his autobiographies? I had one um, which was in my top five, but it's it's not really a book, but taking some liberty it's this oh the evolution on no, the no. uh the alive the, uh, yeah. the alive the alive thing when i was a kid that was the only thing i had on kiss in print and this spread those pictures to me they worth well the pictures worth thousand words so i have here i don't know fifteen thousand words the this this booklet is to me, really, the the beginning of everything as a fan. Yep. And no in terms of um, crystallizing the kiss as, as superheroes when I for one when I was a kid and they were larger than life and it it really those eight pages the marketing this is genius I I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me that they sold a million copies extra of alive just because of the booklet it, the the impact. I, it's um, those pictures had on had on me and on, I'm sure on on, on million others is, uh, is is worth a book in, worth a book in itself. Yeah, fantastic. So just imagine how many pictures were there? there photos on that? What fifteen, twenty? Imagine every one of those yeah. history sized on quality stock. Yeah, 
That's that's a great yeah. one to add. That, that is great. I mean, I remember when I got Alive 2 on vinyl when I was maybe 16 during the reunion tour, and I never had, I'd never seen that booklet before, and, you know, 16, the reunion tour's going on, I'm just immense in the band, I just couldn't be more into them than I was in 96, 97, the reunion tour's going on, and just flipping through that, it was just like, I guess, you know, you, you guys know what I mean, I mean, it's just fantastic yeah. looking at that thing, my gosh, can you, I mean, as great as they are right now, can you imagine seeing them then? I mean, yep. as much as, as much fun as I had on those reunion tour shows, I can't imagine seeing them in 76, 77. How crazy that was. All right, Ken, any last additions? Well, I, I have other books, but they're not all that great. This is just this one here. Oh, The Real uh, Story? Is that, yeah. that Penny's? Or Peggy Tamarkin? Or whoever it was? Uh, yeah, who did it, actually? I don't know. It's a real story authorized. I even know the author on this thing. Um, but anyway, it was came out in 1980. Uh, official, I guess, Kiss product. And it's interesting. It has the, the, what was going on, kind of spot dates of uh, facts of what went on at certain periods of time, starting in when they uh, started out up to uh, 1980. And they, they have some cool pictures in here. Um, they also have a lot of these little, uh, I want to say it's, uh, what do you want to call it? press kit information. And it's like a scrapbook in a way. I mean, it has like a article here and, and they have a part where they show a bunch of their early, uh, you know, posters and things like that in there and their little facts, but uh, it was interesting. It had some cool stuff in it, but, uh, I mean, it's it's not your your best book. It's just kind of sentimental to me because it's one of the first Kiss books I ever bought back. You know. Yeah, and, and that that and Robert Duncan's books would have been the ones generally out in the you know seventies oh, yeah. and er, and in the original These two era. I had bought two yeah, what's it that one? Headliners. Yeah, yeah. When yep. when there were when there were bookstores at the time that you could go to, uh, I remember picking them. I read them, and they had some cool pictures that I had never seen before in in these either. Um, but they were okay books, you know. All right, so let's move. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to say if if, if we had if we had if we hadn't said good things enough good things about Kiss Alive Forever is that they set the record straight on on so many legendary dates and facts which were just legends, um, like where where when the when the demo was recorded and when this happened and when that happened and and they were actually written the. They're, they've rewritten history, um, Jeff and, and Kurt. So uh, more once again, they're, props, they're props thinking about extending that book, right? It's a possibility that they may do another edition or add to it. There's, I know there's the thought of it. I know Julian's done his. Julian's done that already. I, I was, I was just gonna, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Amazon.com. He's, and, and, he's done a very good job. They may use. I'm sure they'll use a lot of Julian's material there, but I, I, I've heard in the recent what, interviews that they're, they're thinking about another volume or uh, an updated volume of the original. Yeah, they need to do an updated, simple as that. They need to do it, and, and I'm, I'm going to say it again, they need to make it history size. They need to make it big and brash. Um, if you look at the layouts that they did for the Kiss, uh, the original Kiss crew, um, they're, they need a Kiss Alive Forever with you know, full graphic layouts, exp ex extended all the way to whenever the band, you know, ends um, so that they don't have to worry about a third edition because everyone's getting older and none of us are getting any younger. Um, but Kiss Alive Forever is where it's at. You know, get the corrections in that book for the stuff that is wrong or missing. Um, but it, it's Kurt and Jeff, without a doubt. Um you know, in, in you know, go back now and interview like Paco or some of the guys who've road managed uh, the band in in this era. Which again, I haven't. Do Mine is cold. My version of on tour is cold and calculating, emotionless. It's reviews from newspapers. It's not talking to anyone who is on the road, and that's where Kiss Alive Forever just kills it with those stories with the the road crew, the the guys who remember, you know, blowing hands off and. You know, know where the bodies are buried, I guess. Um, so, agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah, when that came out, I mean, 
I remember buying that like right when it came out, and I'm so glad I did because now you try to buy it, it's it's really expensive. If you try to buy it now because they're they're gone. Like I heard Kurt do an interview saying he didn't even have one anymore, but he didn't even have a hard copy of it anymore. And it gave him sold them all or gave them all away. But that book for me is is where it's at. If I'm just sitting bored and I want to do something, just just go through and just flipping through that and just looking at set lists just for the hell of it on a Saturday afternoon if I got nothing doing. I mean, that that book is definitely where it's at for any KISS fan. No matter if you're a fan of a certain era, if you're not a fan of the current lineup, well, if you're not a fan of the current lineup, it's perfect for it because it ends after the Farewell Tour. But um, that book is, <laughs> is, is definitely... It, it, it's number one for me. There's, there's no doubt about it. Would be nice if the updated edition had an audio CD with it. Just, just an idea. An audio CD of what? Of uh, some, I don't know, some, <laughs> some rare tracks. You know, some of the uh, archived on audio shows in there that uh, don't circulate, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> for example, some master tapes that aren't. In. Yeah, I mean. How many one-second samples could you fit on an audio CD? Here's a here's a here, here's a little taste. So, Lonnie, let's go. Um, at the beginning of the show, Ken and Alan and I went into the official Kiss biographies and the good, the bad, and the ugly on those. So, give us your you know ninety cent review of those, your favorites, your least favorites, and strength and strengths and weaknesses of them. Well. The best one for me, and I don't, I'm going in this blind. I don't even, I don't know what you guys said, but the best one for me is Paul Stanley's. It is, I know, it, 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 it really, <laughs> I had as one. I did one. Thank you. I think Paul Stanley's is, is phenomenal. I think it's the best, best written, and it, it tells, it, I think it tells the story from start to finish the best out of any of them. And yeah, it, it does have its 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 flaws. Um, Paul Stanley, I don't think he's ever made a mistake in his life if you read that book. But to me, I think it it tells the story the best out of any of the four of them of how things really went down from the beginning till he, till now, and the way Paul opened up about his childhood and and pre-Kiss days, I learned a lot reading that book about Paul Stanley that I didn't know um, from all the other information that I have. I still learned quite a bit in that book, as big of a fan that I am. So that, to me, is, is definitely the best. Um, number two for me is Peter Chris's book. <laughs> because that's, I knew you were going to laugh. <laughs> it's because... I, I, and I know a lot of it's lifted up, maybe because I like Kiss Alive Forever so much, is why I like Peter Chris's book so much. But to me, Peter's book, it, it was told with such, it, it was it was a story that, I, it was a story that I wanted, the side of the story that I wanted, because you always hear the G and Paul side of the story so much, that I wanted to hear it from the other side. I wanted to hear, the I wanted, it, Peter's book to me was exactly what I wanted. It was the bitterness, and it was the, anger and I knew that was what was going to be in it and, it and it totally delivered for me because that's like I said it's a side of story you don't get and yeah it took P Peter I remember reading when I was a kid that Peter was writing a book and it took him until 2012 to put it out and a lot of it was lifted out of Kiss Alive forever but I thought it, I for me I thought Peter's book was great and it, it was it was what I wanted do I agree with everything in there absolutely not I don't agree with everything in there but it was it was a very entertaining read for me, nonetheless. I will say that it was much more entertaining than than the other two because I think Ace's book really falls short of what it should have been and what it could have been. Um, it, Ace's book just—I had a hard time getting. I don't know about you guys, but I had a hard time even getting through Ace's book. It was just—it just—it it seemed unorganized and it, it seemed like. It seems like, oh, I'm going to put a book out. Well, throw it together, and here it is. It didn't sound like Ace talking or Ace even telling the story. It wasn't told. I mean, we've all heard interviews with Ace, and we've heard the way Ace communicates and the way Ace talks. And that book did not come across me like it was being told in the words of Ace Fraley. And to me, it just it, 
it, it, that was maybe the most, maybe even maybe I put in that third. I should have put that fourth actually because to me it's the most disappointing because like I was saying earlier when I jumped on that the books about the books about Ace really are some of my favorites because of the shenanigans and the stories about Ace. And I thought, oh, a book coming straight from the mouth, straight from Ace Fraley. Maybe that'll be the greatest. It'll have all the stories in there that, that I want. And and it just didn't. It felt like somebody was telling Ace this is what happened. He goes, oh, okay, Curly, put that in my book. That'll be great. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the most self most as much as Paul's is self-promoting, I think maybe Gene's is even more self-promoting. Um, I haven't read... Jeans came out like in what oh one like right after the re- right after the farewell tour, and it uh, it it didn't do anything for me. There's there's inaccuracies in in Jeans' book, and it it just it just isn't there for me at all with Jeans' book. I have no desire to go back and reread it, and a lot like his other books, he's just telling the story of how great he is, and. I like. I don't get me wrong. I'm a big Gene Simmons fan. I'm a big Gene Simmons guy, but his book for me was just it, those those two. I, I I rate Paul's and Peter's really high, and I rate Aces and Gene's on the opposite end of the spectrum, really low for me. Anyway, what did you guys say? Just the recap. So yeah. So generally, I guess I wrap it up as saying Gene's is a fairy tale. You know, um, Paul's is a therapeutic confessional. Um, <laughs> Peter's is Scarface. It's just angry. Say hello to my little Monster. friend, my pen. Uh, yeah, and Aces is a blank book. It's pretty good. But it's, it's a very good point you you made it, it for uh, Alani about uh, about Peter's book is that it it's almost like he he wasn't allowed to speak for 20, 30, 25 years. He, he, we only heard Kiss's version and Paul and Jean's revision is just and all that and. That book was finally his chance to tell the, his his version, and he just couldn't stop, and and it was almost too much. One one thing that 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 lost me was that how 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 he reflected on the reunion tour that he was all it was all cynical and and all um, that he could see through the the games, but he looked, he seemed to enjoy himself so much during the reunion tour. But now, ten years later, he writes about how how miserable he was and how. How, how badly he was treated and that, that was disappointing but he especially he, on the it was his chance tour. it was his chance to to finally say it the way he saw it and uh, didn't come out too well unfortunately especially on the reunion tour itself 96 97 because like I've heard different places and I think I saw it on they say it on the second coming that you know they voted Peter MVP of that tour that you know that he really yeah. did a good job and stepped up his game and it really seemed like he was enjoying himself during yeah. that during that phase of it anyway, and in, in his book, you know, he didn't come across like that at all. No, that, no, that he was right. never enjoying himself. That Gene and Paul were always pricks and always assholes and always doing this and always pulling that. And it, so, I mean, I think I think Peter, like you said, wrote with an angry pen and didn't think about well at this moment. How did I feel? How did I really feel at this point in my life? But Peter just went with the angry throughout, and you know it's it's um, it's a shame that it wasn't it, it could have been constructed better. But I really at the same time I really enjoyed it though because it was like I said the the side of the story that that we didn't get that we that we don't get because we always get the other side that you know we're this and Ace and Peter are, the, are that. Well, he wasn't happy with uh, finding out that Ace. Well, yeah, but Ace was getting paid more than him. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> during, the, fair, during, right the, during the end of the farewell tour. Oh my oh, word! Yeah. Yeah, so. some problems with that. It was unbelievable, and that's how the. And I didn't know that, and that's how he said that's what the teardrop came from, is because we found out Ace was getting paid more than him, so he's crying because Ace is getting paid more than him. Is that what it comes down to at the end of the day? <laughs> I mean, somebody wants to pay me forty grand to do a show. Okay, and by the way, we're doing five of them a week, and we're going to tour for six months. I think, you know, I, I think somehow I'd get by on on making that amount of money. Somehow I maybe I'll maybe I'll have to do something. Maybe I'll have to be a door greeter at Walmart, and I get older. But I think somehow I'd be able to get by on making that kind of money. But yet, you also can't really say that because you're not the guy who was with. 
Peter, um, well, Peter was with Gene and Paul for four months before Ace comes into the picture. So doesn't that give him an, maybe an artificial sense of, of uh, you know, of tenure? You know, it's I was more my band than it is yours. Yeah, I, I was here first. You just came, you joined last, Ace. You know, you're just the lead guitarist. I'm the drummer. You know, I... I <laughs> I wrote Beth, goddamn it! Yeah, I wrote I, I wrote I wrote the hit. So the funny thing is, is we can we can never see uh, from their perspectives what forty grand versus forty one grand a show means to them. Um, I, I think it's pretty hilarious from my perspective. Um, I certainly wouldn't snort at forty. Uh, so all I can see is these guys reading each other's books with pens in hand. Uh, except for Ace, who wouldn't give a shit what anyone else <laughs> either wrote or wrote about him. Um, he'd say, hey, tell me what they said about me, Curly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, what, 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 you remember how, how, how much fans were, were criticizing Gene or whatever because he said, you know, in his, book, in his first book, Ace did nothing and Ace did nothing. Mm -hmm. And fast forward 10 years later, Paul and, and Peter having a go at each other with the, the worst passive-aggressive and... and shot at each other and and we're all enjoying it in a way in a sad, in a sad way but as i said the, the comic relief in paul's book is when he, he he makes fun of peter so those are the originals who um as we wrap up start to wrap up this topic of kiss and print who would you most like of the remaining members of kiss to write a book and i, I obviously eric did have a book put out in his name which was a, a real letdown to me i don't think that worked on any level and didn't do him any justice whatsoever but that's just personal preference um vinnie vinnie is still alive vinnie is somewhere vinnie where that are you that would be entertaining vinnie do you have a pen you know, I'll send. If you don't have one, I will send you one and some paper. I, I think, for me, Vinny, I would like to hear the most about because, um, I I think that would kind of blend Peter, Ace, and Gene all into one book with his personality. Of I know he's got a lot to get off his chest historically, whether it's with Kiss, but I also want to hear about him and who he worked with in the seventies. You know, because he he's had such a fascinating musical history. So Vinny, for me, um, because he's got an axe to grind as well, would make one hell of an entertaining read. And he, what had he said years ago? Invincible was going to be his book, and maybe now that Michael Jackson's used that, he won't. Um, Bruce. Bruce also has a heck of a musical history, which would be fascinating to hear about him touring in Europe with George McRae, uh, Meatloaf, but how much has he had not already said on podcasts um, throughout the years to make it still, can he put it together? So him ghosting uh, for various acts, Michael Bolton, Blackjack, Kiss, everything he's done since would make one very interesting read, but could he condense it enough into a readable book? Um, Eric Singer, Journeyman. Um, he seems to have a great sense of humor, so I think his could be very readable. Um, maybe try and earn some respect for drummers who are often, often forgotten, disrespected. So uh, I, I'm going to yeah. go with Vinny as my top pick for who I want to hear from. Alan, who would you most like to have a book from? From those, I I, I think Bruce has an interesting story. Yeah, as as uh, I forgot who said, he 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 has a really good book in him. I think is the, is the, is the expression. Um, not so much the um, the, uh, the the dirty stories or anything, but it, he he was in a period we that as as we said, Kiss almost tries to ignore. So having his view on on Kiss when he joins in uh, during Animal Eyes and uh, the Lean Years, you know, Crazy Nights not working and uh, then, then Hot in the Shade and revenge and then his his real feelings about the, the uh, unplugged and the and the reunion yeah, and he, t so. he tells such positive stories I mean I remember interviewing him in India and I said something uh, I, I can't even remember what it was but it, it had a little bit of a negative tone and he jumped on that quickly and turned it around into you know the positive so I don't know whether he was still um, uh, you know, kind of protective of not being seen uh, saying anything negative towards something Kiss related at that point, and that was 1999. Um, so I would love to hear his his take on those challenging uh, situations he's found himself in during their history. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be um, 
he, if he has a positive outlook on things, that that's that's yeah. great too. It's his story. Yep, exactly. Ken, who would you uh, most like to to well, read about? Well, I agree with uh, Vinny and and Bruce. Those would be very interesting. Uh, I'm thinking Tommy Thayer. Um, I'd like to hear. I mean, he probably would have to do it after he's out of the band, um, but uh, he was there for a, a good period of time. What late eighties? maybe or around 90 um even back when you know gene he could start when gene was producing black you know uh, black and blue um but uh and when he was in the kiss tribute band even you know he can that would be interesting too um but i think his story would be very interesting and plus he he would be a real insider there as watching it kind of like a kiss lent i mean not a, a you know the lent book a kiss and sell book Yes, um, he was the tour manager in the yeah. tour or something. Exactly. Like yeah. it's, a, it's similar in the case that it's kind of you're outside looking in and what's going on with the, the, that current lineup, whether it was with uh, Eric Carr at the time or then later when Eric Carr died and, and Eric, you know, Eric Singer came in and then when they decided to do the uh, – you know the convention tour, the unplugged, and then the reunion. He was there that whole time, and up now up till now, right? So I think he'd have a lot of interesting stories that he just can't talk about yet, and and how he became, you know, how he was asked to to replace Ace. Even it would be very interesting how it all went down. So I would say Tommy Thayer would be very interesting. Lonnie. Um, yeah, I think Tommy would be really good. He'd be a good fly on the wall story. But, um, you know, I like the Vinny and Bruce. They'd make good ones too. But for me, I think Eric Singer would make a really, a really great book also to talk about his up from moving to LA from Cleveland and playing in different bands and, and Badlands and Lita Ford and Black Sabbath and really just being a journeyman until he joined Kiss and finally joining Kiss in 92 and, feeling like this is where I'm supposed to be and being in Kiss from 92 to late 95 and getting replaced, you know, getting and getting replaced by Peter in, in 95 and hear his take on that through. Cause I mean, let's be honest, Eric, especially in 1995, Eric, and, and even not, I shouldn't say especially in 1995. I mean, period. Eric Singer is, is a superior drummer and to be replaced by an inferior drummer, at that point. And, you know, I've read that Eric was, was pretty hacked off about it at the time. And, and then for it to happen again in 2003, and they bring Peter back again for the, for the symphony to get, you know, Eric's take on that. And uh, along the same lines as the Tommy Thayer book, like you were saying, Ken, it's not something that, that Eric could put out right now because Eric has to play, Eric has to play a role right now. He has to be, you know, he's in kiss, he's kisses drummer. He can't, you know, he, and, you know, I, I don't know. Is Eric really going to go off on Gene and Paul in his book saying, you know, I was pissed at Gene and Paul. Not only did they screw me once and they screwed me again in 03 and they bring back Peter. But I think he would make he would make a very interesting read of what was going, of of how he felt and how things progressed um, from being the journeyman that he was, from being in Kiss and being out of Kiss and being back in Kiss and out of Kiss. And I, I think his story would be great. And to hear... Um, Eric's told stories at conventions in the past too about the farewell tour in Japan and Australia with Ace Frehley to to get some more detail and like some some really good insight of what was going on then and you know because you listen to those shows the band really sounds incredible to me um, on that Japan and Australian tour in 01 and it's a shame that that lineup was so short lived and that many of us really got to see it or to see what that lineup's potential could have been. Um, but I think Eric would, would make a great book, would, would make a phenomenal book. He was, I went to the expo over the weekend, by the way, and he was, he was so cool at the expo and he always is. He signed from like 10 in the morning until eight at night and did a Q and A and he's just as nice as a day is long. Oh, he's he just, is. You know, he was, a, I think, I can't remember if it was 1999 or 2000. <laughs> he was an indie and I got to interact a, a little bit around him and he was just amazing. Great guy. Absolutely, yeah. you know, killer sense of humor as well. And he has a great sense of humor. He's one guy, the guy, in, real quick, the guy in front of me had like one of those costume um, belts from the Rock the Nation tour, 
and he's signing it, and he's like, well, what do you, and he, like, this guy had all kinds of stuff, and he's like, oh, can you write this, and write, um, write to Mark, uh, keep rocking, Eric Singer. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell Eric is just kind of done with this guy at a certain point. So he's signing this belt, and he goes, what, what do you want me to write in this one? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But you, uh, one thing I do want to jump in with, um, on, on, and you bring up Eric Singer, Dave Ellefson of uh, Megadeth put out a book years ago, Making Music Your Business. And a, it's a guide to young musicians from his perspective playing in bands. I think that sort of book from Eric Singer, as the mm-hmm. journeyman drummer, you know, making drumming your business, um, would be a fantastic way of him maybe to be able to put out a book without necessarily, you know, uncovering the skeletons. You know, a, an instructional guide because this is this is a drummer who has played with Black Sabbath, Alice Cooper, Kiss, Brian May. I mean, his his resume is just absolutely unbelievable and. His his humor and his outlook, which come across in interviews and these expo appearances, I think he's got a lot to show young musicians from the professional side of the business. Not only, I mean, some of the stories that he could tell um, in that without going into, you know, the dirt would would just be a, a fantastic Eric Singer book. So, and I also say more power to the suggestion of Tommy Thayer. Um, I don't see that one happening I think Doc McGee would probably put out a book first, uh, but you know, th- there's there's so much more to know from the, any one of these people's perspectives, and it's just a shame we don't have Bill O'Coin still with us to write his, because that would have been probably possibly the best one of the lot or the worst, because he's apparently you know very honorable and maybe wouldn't have wanted to dish any of the stuff that we want to know about. So, any final words on uh, or thoughts on Kiss books? Alan, it's getting late for you, so uh, I'll let you go first. Okay, but just um, let's hope uh, the best book is yet to come. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, projects going on. I think uh, we we have one on the board uh, with Ross and uh, his uh, chronicle of of the picture. I think we're all really looking forward to that one. Um, I would like to see something about Kiss in Japan for personal reasons. Um, well, get to work. Yeah, compilation. Yes, yes, <laughs> I'm working on it. So yeah, I, I um, we we've we've been very blessed with I think everything we've got from Kiss, especially from fans. The book from Lydia, the Kiss Alive Forever, the four biographies. We finally have them. So uh, we're looking forward to to the next uh, next excellent book, which I think will be the photo book. Ken, final thoughts. Yeah, I agree with the uh, uh, with him that the uh, Ross Radley, yeah, that book that sounds very compelling, uh, very interesting. It's going to be a very thorough book, I believe. Today, <clears throat> excuse me, today he was going to have a crowdfunding uh, kind of thing for his book or something like that out there. Um, I think it's on the forum, um, but. Uh, that one sounds like it's very detailed in the early years of Kiss, uh, with even makeup changes, uh, costume changes, you know, designs, all kinds of things, uh, and very uh, pictures that have never, you know, no one ever, no one has uh, ever seen before. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I would like a book, like a Beatles book I have, which is called uh, All the Songs, and it's about. You know, this it's, it's thick. It's a thick, big book. And it goes song by song through each song about and explains uh, about the writing of the song, maybe. Or And it has it has actually the pictures of the instruments that were used to record those songs. And I would like all the sessions in a book, um, you know, what was used, what instruments was used, why they did this or that. And I think the same people who did the Kiss Alive, forever or have some of that information now on kiss i thought i heard that in another podcast um that they may be doing something with that uh kind of information that they have about the day that kiss went to the studio to record this song at whatever time and and, uh, i mean that to me that's very fascinating information and uh, i'd like to i'd like to see that one day lonnie final thoughts 
Um, there's a lot of good books out there. I mean, I like. I mean, the biographies are great, but um, the Ken Sharp, Nothing to Lose, and the um, Kiss Alive Forever are, are just the top two for me. Um, just phenomenal with minutia and, and detail that's out there. And for me, I would. We mentioned it before. I would really like to see a follow up of Nothing to Lose with like a seventy six through eighty edition, and then editions after that as well. I think. Things like, I, I personally, I would just eat them up just to get more detail of just a book, just detailing certain era, certain eras of the band. Um, you know, have, a, have a, a book just on 96 through 2000, just everything that was going on with behind the scenes stuff, with the touring, with the recording, the Psycho Circus, with disagreements and contracts, and just, you know, just that kind of minute detail on certain eras, I think I would. And I don't. I'm not the only one who would eat it up. I think fans would just would just love it just, as much as they love nothing to lose. So that's uh, that's my wish. Yeah. One more thing that I forgot <clears throat> is there's that book about uh, the making of Destroyer. Oh yeah. Out that's there, that's out. on Amazon. Yeah, I I I purchased it already. Um, put on order. Um, that may. I'm hoping that's a good book. I mean, it's all just really about cool. the making. I'm hoping it turns out to be good. But it's uh, good potential. It's good potential. Just making of an album by album is that's an interesting thought, um, and I hope it's I hope it's very good. Uh, we'll see what 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 it looks like when we get it. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. Um, and one last one I want to mention is uh, the Swedish Kiss book, the you know Kiss in Sweden, which I'm not going to jump up and go get it. It's another heavy one. I would love to see more of that. And Alan said, you know, Kiss in Japan. Well, what about Kiss in the UK? What about Kiss in Germany? It doesn't have to be written in English. You know, write it in the local language because obviously a lot of us bought the Kiss in Sweden one just for the pictures. Um, that one was incredibly well put together. They took a page out of Lydia's book and went for extremely high quality. They, I, I can't read the text, but it looks beautifully laid out. It really covers all the tours and individual dates where the band visited Sweden. So, you know, my hat off to you guys in Kiss Sweden because you you really put together a good book. So seeing those for some of the big, bigger markets, kiss, kiss in Brazil, you know, kiss in Japan, kiss in UK, kiss in Germany, kiss in Australia. Come on, Australians. How many tours have you had down under that have been absolutely incredible? I mean, 1980 being your first and being such an incredible event. Why isn't there a coffee, a coffee table book on kiss in Australia? 1995, the first conventions in Australia. 1995, the electric shows in Australia. The reunion, the farewell shows with Ace and Eric Singer. So, guys, you're slacking off down under. You know, you're, that, that, that's a great idea. You know, the, that that would be... The 03 be a, shows, the 04 shows, yeah. they those in-your-face shows down there those, in the, that they played in those clubs down there in 04. be great. There's so much history down there. That'd be awesome. So I think the final thought is, is as much has already been written and published, there is still a lot of scope for more. And I hope people stay creative out there. And if they're not able to, um, you know, get a publisher to do it themselves. I think I've proved that you can do it yourself. And I think other people have proved that they can do it better themselves. So it it's never all been said. It's never all known. There is a lot left to still know. So this is our episode on Kiss in print, the biographies, autobiographies, and everything else. So we thank you for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Come over to the KissFAQ.com message board and talk about the books or you know, hit us on Facebook and uh, give us your thoughts on what you've enjoyed and what you haven't. So, Alan? Ken, Lonnie, I'd like you to thank you all for joining today and hope to see you all again soon. Yeah.